What did we decide on the thread here, Jim? Okay, yeah, it's half 28, just yeah. your standard thread for any of those two to three type calibers. Yeah. So all those types of front ends you want to put on there, modifiers, whatever you want to call them, will all go straight onto that barrel. Right, and I think we've got a, uh, a blast shield as well that is going to be optional. Yep. And so it's sort of quite newish in, in technology, so muzzle break inside, but a cover so that the blast goes forward, keeps it quiet and away from the shooters because you you know what typical muzzle brakes are. They're, uh, they're not, yeah. You lose a lot of friends with yeah, them. Very noisy. <laughs> yeah. 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 Especially around a car. Yeah. yeah, and um, I, I printed... This is just the 3D print of the front end of the gas block, which is being made at the moment. And hopefully next week we'll have the real McCoy. But this inside here, then obviously the, the gas tube or the hole will be up on top. Yep. And it will give this this tube so, here. Yep. So that, 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 right that stays with the, Yeah, that stays with it. Yep. And that will move. And that can come out. Yeah. Um, which... Uh, we have, they're both the same size at the moment, but we'll have a larger hole for the lower velocity ammunition, uh, the standard size hole for your normal factory. Yep. We've also put in a third position, which is just done by the locator, which blocks it off totally. So you will get no action of the gun apart from manual operation. Right. So, for that. so it'll stop <laughs> throwing the case out into the wherever. Yeah. Uh, so if you're trying to save your cases for some reason, but it will... It will stop that operation, basically make it a straight pull. Yeah. That's just a simple turn type adjustment. Yeah. So that would just be available. Well, that's an extra bonus, the really, because it's not available with any anything else on the market. No. no. Um, so it, it gives you that option of higher loads, yeah. lighter loads, and yeah. blocking it off totally so you don't have to worry about throwing cases in the, inside the car or something, whatever, whatever reason, really low velocity stuff. Yep you can just be able to turn that off and go, yes, it's still straight pull, no noise out of the receiver, no yep. nothing like that. No, yeah. no, it's a good idea. Mm. Very good. So how far is this rod going to travel? In, in we are? It travels about an inch, about 25, 26 millimetres. Right, and that, um, that's enough to that's get enough to start up. the momentum. And by that time, the, the bolt head is unlocked yep. and is clear of the barrel extension. Yep. So after that, it's just purely the momentum of the bolt carrier against yep. the springs. So that's what balances that out. Right. So a larger amount of gas there will give it more power in that first start of a stroke. Yep. But it doesn't need to go all the way back. The no. kinetic energy is enough to... Uh, Once you start it moving, yeah. it's, it, the velocity of that bolt carrier stays the same. Right. Um, Excellent. And so locking time is quite... Very quick. Very quick indeed, isn't it? Very quick, yeah. Okay. yeah. It's typical of any of the 223s. And it's actually, if you go back, even a Mini 14... Yeah, all of the all of the actions that work on that, and, and you've got to actually attribute pretty well all of that to John Moses. It's been no real change since John Moses came up with the idea in the late eighteen hundreds. the The proof is really that the bullet is way gone by the time anything here can start moving, mainly because of the weight of items that just dwells it for that little bit of time, which then gives the the chance for that to, to start moving. Once it started moving, obviously it goes back. The springs it will. Well, with this operation, the spring will load up, absorb a lot of your recoil. So a bolt action rifle, everything is like boom, solid. Here, you've got the gas system and the springs taking up that load, which means the gun will stay on target after you fire the shot because mm. there's less solidness in yeah, the Absolutely. When the shot's fired, the gas will push this piston back, will pull the bolt back to about there. Then it's free. It's started to cock the hammer already, all of those taking off it. It's just building up pressure on the springs. The latch will latch back there. When you release the latch, go forward, strip around off the magazine into the chamber up there. We start the cycle again. Yeah. The gas will come here, just punch that. And there's a spring yeah. spring in here, obviously. There's a spring that holds that rod back against there or just returns it back into its right yep. position. Yep. The gas comes through here into this area here, which is like a piston yep. in a car. So there's the piston. It has little cleaning rings on it. Yep. So basically, any crud that gets on there, it's just typical of all the gas systems. A couple of grooves is enough to give it an edge that will be self-cleaning. So yeah. anything that gets in there, in actual fact, gets cleared out. Yep. And better there than, in, than inside here. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, that's yeah. just that's just there, and yeah. and the area on your handguard is just 
sealed for that, that small amount, so you don't have your rails on the top here anywhere, so gas can get out. So gas will just escape around the barrel and inside the four end. Yeah, very, very minimal, especially a, a gun that will open yep. and stay open, so it means cool air goes through your barrel, yep. which means it also gets into your gas system. Yep. So it stays, it stays very cool, as opposed to a gun that cycles and closes up with the round there. Mm. The hot air and gases and that is trapped in there until you fire the shot and then it starts that all again. Yeah. So I see now we've, we've got the lever on this side uh, for lefties. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I put that on there because the gun's staying on the bench. It looked a bit silly sitting with the other one. So we have levers for both sides. So the yeah. But it is. It, it will actually be an ambidextrous. Totally ambidextrous. Yeah. yeah. The and having a spot. safety. Yeah, we haven't touched on the safety. The safety is a cross bolt type safety, which means it can be handled from either side. Yep. So it really means that you can't get confused with having two levers yep. next to each other on a gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's really odd, but you can. Yeah, it <laughs> does oh, Which one did I push? Yeah. And get caught. So. And it gives us more room, I suppose. And more because once it's out of the way, it's flush. Yeah. So there's nothing there. Right. Uh, effectively, yeah. it'll be on the opposite so, side to your lever. Yeah. Whichever way you want to go, we can turn it around. Yeah. yeah. So that, that, that gives you an ambidextrous yeah. total use. We're using a clamp system to hold the barrel in. Yep. Anybody who's used to the PRSs and all those sorts of AR ideas with the big nut, mm. where you'd be the big spanner and yeah, yeah. To, to get it tight, yeah. we have three bolts that clamps it in. Yep. Again, you torque them up. We've changed a little bit here. What happens when you, you design something and then you all of a sudden change your mind because you come up with something better? The bolt handle will actual fact move forward to approximately here, which will mean that will close up. Will a bit. close up. Yep. Yep. Uh, reduce the amount of uh, space for the, rubbish to get. Yeah, in. Dirt yeah, and stuff like that. Yep. The other thing that having a handle here does is an ejected case will come out and hit the handle more than coming back in, especially a lefty. Yep. More than the case coming back into the face. Right. If you see any pictures of the um, AR-15 type gun, you'll see on the side of the gun, there's this big bulge. Yeah. Because they don't have a handle there. Yep. And it stops the cases coming straight back along the action, hitting you in the face. Yeah. Right. So the handle is exactly the center of the ejection position. Yep. So the case can hit the handle, go down, go up. Yeah. But not straight into your eye or something yep. like that. So we, we do position that for a purpose and moving it forward, serve two things, one, the gas, mm. but two, it put it closer to where the case rotates out. So yep. instead of spinning around before it comes around, it gets half a rotation and then it's gone. Yeah. By moving that forward, it will sit uh, about there under normal conditions of, of closed. Yep. When the gun's open, it will sit somewhere about there. So we've closed so we've all closed that. Closed up all of that. All that opening the yeah, all the stuff that can get yeah. in there and that you've blocked out. Yeah. The thing that you know, I think we've successful on is is having this system, not having this firearm, not as a hinged pull a pin. You pick up a lot of these particular type of rifles and you take a pin up. Yeah, and that's it. I mean, this is rock solid. And at yep. the end of the day, we're not building this for people who want to hang in a tree upside down and, <laughs> yeah, and strip yeah, their guns. We're not going GI <laughs> Jane or whatever it no, was. Yeah. And, and the other thing is they shouldn't have to because we're not delivering gas into the receiver at all. So we envisage a hell of a lot less issues with this particular yeah. system. If you drop it in the mud or something like that, you're going to do the same thing as you'd do if you're really nice bolt action rifle or whatever else you've had. Yep. You're going to pull apart and claim it. Yep. You know, given the originality of all this design, it was basically meant to be used by military. Yep. So there are a lot of things in there that, that actually sort of take care of yep. that sort of stuff. There's places in there that mud can go that's not going to cause a problem. But hey, we all like our guns. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Don't but, worry. You know, if there's that big group of pigs or something out there, well, you don't want to could be on the handle on it. Yep, absolutely. So, the probably as we as we move back, I think we talked about the magazine release and the safety, so yeah. just basic units as everyone's used to. A straight trigger, which will centre line pretty well on where that one is, yeah. which Great. gives you a really nice position. You can grab quickly, finger all the way through, but it's still not that long. Mm -hmm. But if you want to just tuck your finger out and get that pad thing, yep on a nice flat surface, yep. then you've got a very fine and trigger. And the trigger weight will be very, very minimal on this because we don't have to have all those other things in there yeah. that other guns have. And we've got that sort of extra three quarters of an inch length of pull. Yeah. You know, we I, I find a lot of the traditional guns very, very short and yeah. you're, you're sort of hunched up when you, you can't really shoot them comfortably in real terms, whereas this longer length of pull, you know, makes it a much better system. You can get a really nice pad on Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, you know, for that nice precise shot, yeah. and still grab it and stick your finger through if you're in the yeah. We all do that. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're we're guilty of 
when we're in a hurry. Yeah, when does. that pig's running. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of uh, trigger weight, Jim, where do you think we'll end up? I think for your normal safety of people using them. Yeah. Who, you know, we've got obviously people who can have the lightest trigger in the world because they're on a bench rest or something like that. Yeah. You're throwing it around in a vehicle or you're on a motorbike or something like that. Different story. Um, then you need that little bit of weight for safety. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be horrible. No. So you can have a little bit of weight with a really nice let off. Yep. And it's going to be something that when we get to fire it a bit, we'll probably all, everybody will get an idea. Yep. I would probably just aim at four pound to start with. Yep. With a nice smooth let off. Up to no, and no creep. And no creep. None of that hard stop thing. Yep. And none of that horrible long two stage type idea. Yep. And because of the way we're designing it, we're making it ourselves, we're not restricted to what people have been trying to make that yep. will fit something else yep. that we don't really have here anyway. Where do you think we'll be weight wise? Are we we sort of thinking six five pounds something like that? Five the, and the trigger weight. No, the, the gun. The, the, um, yeah, we're going to have to weigh it. Really. Yeah, well, we're getting See, close. We go. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting close. We're just We've been more worried about making it more than um, constraining yeah. it to a um, yeah a weight limit. But um, I, I, this barrel's a little bit heavy compared to probably what will be on there. This area here will probably be a bit smaller. Yeah, that will be. Brought in a bit, yeah. And the seven seven series alloy top end has very certainly light. helped a hell of a lot, hasn't it? Yeah, know? very light, yep. very light. Your seven oh seven five's ideal. And the, the probably at the moment there's a little bit of bulkiness. We haven't trimmed off these edges here and all yep. that sort of stuff. But it'll only make a little bit of difference. Yeah, yeah. It's not a lot. So by the time if we were to weigh this probably right now and say so we're going to take a little bit of weight off there, a little bit of weight off here, and put a four end on, it'll probably be whatever this weight is really. Yeah. Yeah. We should we should go and weigh it now that we've got one all together. Yeah, yeah, and you know different different things there with all the adjustments on them and all that well, sort of yeah. stuff can add a little bit of weight. But I think it'll it'll still be within like one pound no matter what you add to it. Yeah, yeah. So if we say it's going to be between six and eight, yeah, <laughs> it'll probably be always around seven. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, there we have the uh, the weight three point three nine kilos bare. So I guess at uh, a magazine three point four eight. 3.475. Yeah, so that's going to be about 7.5. 7.7. Yeah. 